look what came in the mail today. Holy crap. <laughs> Bees for Vampire Cave. I'm so happy. Hey guys, what's up? It's Steph. And today we're doing a fun little Q&A video for your face. Or not your face, whatever. You're listening to this with your ears, so it's more for the benefit of your ears than your face. Your face can't really do anything other than express emotion, so. Over explaining, over explaining. Back to the topic. So yeah, I asked over all my social medias for some questions. And though a lot of them came from the same source, we're gonna go with it. I'm gonna pull from everywhere, get some questions going, answer some cues with the dash of A's as Dallin would probably call it because he always mixes it up when he's like, yo, Q&A. You know, this is completely irrelevant. But I'm saying it anyway. <laughs> Whoa, I should shut up. Question one, what's your favorite type of fan fiction? My favorite type of fan fiction is, I don't know, I like ones that build off of cer certain episodes, like I don't see many of them, but like they, they just take one episode and they just kind of build a story from that, they take it a different direction than the show took it or the movie took it, and they just like go off the direction of that one scene with exploring different relationships that could happen, different scenarios that could happen as a result. Um, I really like the horror kind of bits of it. I like when people like twist characters in ways you, you wouldn't think they could be twisted. I just, oh, I just, it's so interesting. Like there's so many different types out there and it's just really fun to explore them. I honestly like all types of fan fiction. I like exploring all these different aspects of characters different from what the main creators may have thought or like running on similar lines to what the, what the creators may have thought. But honestly, I just love all types of it and I, and yeah, I'm rambling. <laughs> Question two, what's your biggest pet peeve on the realms of storytelling on how someone writes, i.e. grammar? I think, I don't know, biggest pet peeve. When it, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna like go for a book that I was really hyped for, I was really excited to read. And then I read an excerpt and I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> and that was like, not to drag or anything, but um, Perfect 10. I can't even think of the, the author. But I was so excited for that book because the premise sounded really good. You know that we had there was a gay character. There, um, it was gonna like revolve around like this like this gay character in high school and like creating the perfect the perfect ten with like his Wiccan friend. And it sounded really cool and really interesting. But when I opened it up, it sounded like something that like it sounded like kind of like bad fan fiction. You know what I mean? Like things don't get properly explained. Things are just like told to you like it's nothing's really like kind of played out and I just couldn't get into it I, the whole time I'm just like this is an actual book like this isn't just a fan fiction thing and it's like I don't I didn't know what to think and I, I couldn't get past like thinking it was really like a fan fiction and I had this book on pre-order and everything and I ended up canceling my order so and that was before it like it's release date but I ended up canceling my order because I had the, that looking at the preview I was like I can't re like I just can't enjoy this if I can't get get into the first chapter I can't get into the rest of the book like I can't get into the way it's being told and like I don't know po points of view don't really bother me I do prefer third like writing I do prefer third person over first person although I have written in both I'll read both they both have their benefits they both have their kind of knockdowns but my, my biggest pet peeve is just like kind of you're not do like they don't I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it came off as someone, this was their first draft. They didn't really bother to like go back and like add feeling. There wasn't feeling to it. That was probably my biggest pet peeve. So there was absolutely no feeling. I mean, it's just kind of told, this happened. This is happening. We're talking about this. This is what happened. And now it's relating to this. Now I'm going to go see my ex-boyfriend's brother. <laughs> but it, it, I couldn't get into it. It's, you need feeling in writing. You need you need to like invoke some kind of emotion and I was getting nothing. Was I supposed to feel sympathy for this character? Was I supposed to feel for, for it, th that other character? I couldn't feel for them, so I just didn't. And that's probably my biggest pet peeve. That went really long and explanatory, but feeling, you need to invoke feeling. <laughs> How do you stay focused long enough to finish a book in the amount of time you do? Anytime I try something that I love writing, I end up leaving it behind because I lose inspiration. Now, I, I completely feel that method of thinking because there's plenty of things where I've started it and I never finished it. You guys won't believe the amount of fix that have never seen a light of day just because I lost inspiration or like I got so into it and then like halfway through I'm just like this is such a stupid idea I'm not going to touch it anymore. 
even some of my fix I have up right now, like, I'm so sorry for not updating some of them. I know y'all yell at me a lot. I'm sorry, I've apologized multiple times. But even then, like, some of them, like, I do want to go back and continue writing, but, like, the inspiration just isn't there when I try to, when I try to type. I have to be in a certain mindset for certain ideas. And if you leave that mindset for too long, it's really hard to get back into them. <coughs> Pile of words. But as for staying focused, with um, with some stories, I'll just sit down and that's all I will focus on for the longest. I don't know. Like, how do I explain this? When I'm working on a project, I'll usually dedicate, like, if I can't get on the computer to, to actually, like, work on things, I'll take out my notebook and just, like, jot ideas down, different, like, timelines, different, like, continuations of the story, different, like, directions it can go. Then when I do it on the computer, I write what feels right. You know what I mean? Like, most of the stuff that I have up isn't far from a finished product. Just like Malfunction. Right now, before I send it to a professional editor, I'm having to go through and edit it myself. I just finished it on Wattpad. You guys can read it's in, in it in its entirety right now. Before it's edited, before it gets finally polished. I want people to point out the, like, the flaws I have. Like my world building. I am shit at world building. I am. I need to get better at world, world building. And I'm working on that before I send it to a, to a, to a final editor. I, I need to like build up more of the, this world. Like, I've explained bits, but I haven't explained it enough. And that's one of my big downfalls, and I need to just like work on it. It's so much easier when you're writing in a, fictional, a pre-established fictional world. But when you're creating your own, people are going to need you to tell them, like, okay, what is this? Why are things like this? I don't understand. You have to be the one to explain that. I'm really delving away from your question. I'm really sorry, but I'm I'm just kind of going. I mean, I, I'm sorry, you know guys know I ramble, I'm sorry. <laughs> but just staying focused is just like constantly thinking of new ideas, even if you're not writing on it that certain day. Which, I tr like, I if I really focus on something, I try to write at least 100 words. It, like, if I can get nothing more than 100 words, if I can at least get 100 words, that's good. For my actual books outside of fix, I try to go for at least 1,000 words a day. Like, if I could do it for a while, I was pumping out, like, 1,500 words a day. Like, I was really inspired. But, yeah. I don't... You gotta try, like, if you can get just a little bit written a day, it'll help keep you, like, motivated for that story. And when you can't necessarily, like, work on the story itself, like, continuation, because you don't have what you need with you or anything, just work on ideas. Just work on, like, possible plot points. Work on characters. What do you think they could say? Think of different quotes they could say. Think of different conversations they could have. Think of things like that. How will your characters work together? How can you build their dynamics together? What what songs define your character? What, like, just think of things you can link to your character. Who are they as a person? Maybe just focus on the character. And then when you get to the story, you can be like, I know exactly what he'll do, he or she will do in this situation. And I hope that helps. I hope I'm being helpful. I really don't know if I am. Um, everyone has their own different method on staying focused. And you really need to find... What, what keeps you focused on a story? What makes you continue on a story that you really love without abandoning it and setting it to the side thinking, I'm gonna come back to it, but then you just never do because your heart just isn't in it anymore. You just have to like find things to keep you focused and keep you on track. And you can work on, on multiple projects at once. Just make sure there's always a bit going towards the one, there's a, always a bit going towards the different ones. I hope I explained that well. I really don't know. <laughs> What's one character and or story trope you've, you've eaten you're eager to write about, but you haven't gotten around to it yet. Story trope. There's so many story tropes that I love and I would love to like write about. It's hard to really pick just one. I don't know. I kind of like the dynamic of like starting characters out kind of hating each other and then kind of growing to like love each other. I've kind of worked on that dynamic with, with my book, but it wasn't that, that extreme. I really kind of want to do that extreme where it's like to like just like absolute hate and like slowly they come cross their for closer and like they learn more things about each other and it's just like wow I dig it <laughs> but I don't know like there's so many tropes that I like and I don't like I already said that <laughs> there's I don't know there's so many that like it's hard to choose just one Pro I'm I'm just gonna stick to like the loving and hate each other. It's like a really common trope, but I really love that trope. 
And, like, there's certain tropes I've written within the genre, which I'm happy to have written with that trope. I like that trope, so... I thought I liked it for my for my uh, for my story. I realized it's like I pretty much realized after I was like pretty in depth writing it that it was like a pretty big trope, and it kind of bummed me out. But at the same time, it's like you know what? This is my story. It's unique from all these other stories, and I'm gonna go with it, and I'm gonna do my best with it. And like that's the best I can do. Every story is unique, so yeah. <laughs> What's one story you cringe looking back on, but would love to rewrite, rewrite if given the chance? That one is so easy. I don't even want to mention it by name. Let's just look over the basics of the story. So there's a demon in hell. He's, he's messed something up. And he's angered the higher level demons. So, he gets punished. What's his punishment, you ask? He is sent to work the graveyard shift. Haha, <laughs> pens, because he's literally sent up to tro tro like trail around a graveyard and just like generally mess with people when they come inside. And he's sent up there with another with another demon. They're just chilling. And then this group of, of dumbass teenagers comes in with the Ouija board and they're like, we're going to play in a cemetery because there's no better atmosphere. Spooky. <laughs> now, while these kids are playing with the Ouija board, of course, demon A is going to like mess with them. Not even for his punishment, just because messing with people is great. So he's doing that. He's manipulating elements. He's like, he's moving the board. But as he's doing it, he unfortunately reveals himself to one of the one of the teens that's playing with the board. And that sends them all like, oh my god, and they're like booking it. So he, he watches after them. He watches them leave. And he's like really curious about like as to why... And like, what's up? How that one could see him when pe humans weren't aren't supposed to be able to see demons. <laughs> now he gets to do some more character stuff, and they're set. They're con They're going back to the grave. Um, they're back to the graveyard. I believe. Okay, I wrote this like t a while back, so I'm sorry if I'm a bit fuzzy on the memories. I don't even look at comments in this anymore because I cringe so hard because. I love the story. I love like the, the main plot points and everything. It's how I writ it that was absolutely horrible. Back to the summary. Either he go he like exits leaves the cemetery and like that's a big no no because he's in punishment right now, he's not supposed to leave the cemetery. And he follows them and kinda like creeps them out more. Or for some reason two of them go back because they forgot the one kid who saw who saw the demon, he forgot his backpack in the cemetery and goes back to retrieve it. Now he doesn't actually get out of the car. The friend that drove him is like, "Yo, you're freaked out. I'll get your stuff for you, man. I'm not I'm not afraid." So his friend is walking through the cemetery, and our demon sees an opportunity. Sees an opportunity to learn more about this curious human that like saw him, saw through the veil, and so what does he do? He possesses the friend and goes back to the car. Simple as that. They go back to his house. They're kind of talking. The one, the friend, he has a boyfriend, but Demon isn't really that knowledgeable of that. He can see inside the friend's memories, but he isn't really on that level of affection with the boyfriend as the friend is. So I'm explaining this really bad. I'm sorry. So the boyfriend kind of notices, like, hey, you're acting weird, are you alright? And so, demon out time. Everybody freak the hell out time. <laughs> and it gets crazy. I really loved the story when I wrote it. Like, I was so into it. Looking back now, just like the dialogue. A lot of the dialogue. I was trying to mesh, mesh so much together at once. It's just horrible. <laughs> I love the story in itself, like. The plot. I loved the plot of the story. I, ugh, I just loved it, but like everything else about it, I can't stand. Whenever someone comments on it, I cringe so bad. And recently, one of my favorite accounts is like, I'm, I post on my on my page like I'm gonna take take that fic down. They're like, what fic? Tell me so I can read it. And I'm like, I'm not telling you. And they're like, I'm gonna find it. And they did. And they read it. So I cringed even more to the fact that they actually read the whole thing and I'm like, no, you're my favorite, please don't. 
I could have actually cried. It was so cringe-worthy and embarrassing for me. I'm like, eh. I still haven't deleted it though. It's one of my first kind of fix, and <laughs> I want to delete it so bad, but at the same time, I want to show how I've grown and how I'm not as cringeworthy <laughs> as I was. Although I'm sure I'm still like extremely cringy. But that first one is just worse than anything you could ever possibly imagine. Like, it's absolutely horrible. Don't go looking for it. I'm going to die. Um, you haven't done a tattoo update in a while. I don't think I've ever shown you guys my tattoos. So, let's get to that, shall we? Can you see it? Is it in frame? The tattoo that is literally a pun on my body. Don't threaten me with the dark side. Ha <laughs> ha. Get it? Because it's Star Wars and Panic at the Disco. You make it less funny when you have to explain it. So the Star Wars tattoo is, I met the um, actor who portrayed like Darth Vader in the suit. Not like the actual voice actor, but the guy who portrayed him in the suit. I met him, got to shake his hand, I'm taking pictures with him, I have his autograph. And so I got that because like when he shook my hand, like ultimate nerd out moment. He's like, he, he's like, hello? And I'm like, hello? And he's like, you know, officially part of the dark side. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool, man. <laughs> like freaking out. Actually, fun fact, I have I had an iPod case with Darth Vader on it, like the lava and everything. And I like brought it to him and I'm like, will you sign this? He's like, do you really want me to ruin this? And I'm like, dude, you're not ruining it at all. No. But anyway, back to the tattoos. So a little octopus tentacle you see there. Can you see it? I don't know. A little octopus tentacle is for the first time that I saw and met Panic at the Disco. Now, when I met, like, my first show was at Santa Barbara last year, um, the summer tour. And it was, like I said, Santa Barbara had passed the ocean to get there. From the venue, we could see the ocean. Like, it was absolutely beautiful. The venue was amazing. The town, I did not like the town. Who has a parade on Friday that blocks out every single street leading to your concert venue? So I almost missed the meet and greet and freaked out and, like, cried. <laughs> anyway. No, um... But yeah, it was right there by the ocean. It was like, you could see the ocean. Don't threaten me with a good time, obviously. Future Stephanie here, because I forgot to mention the fact that I actually took finger tentacles to my meet and greet. And Brent, like, I made Brennan, like, laugh. And it was, the, it was the great greatest experience of my life. I should do a story time on that. I might do that. Leave a comment if you want a story time about when I met them at Santa Barbara, because it was, it was fantastic. Like, it's not my favorite song off Death of the Bachelor, but I love that video so much. I don't know what we were expecting, but it was not tentacles. <laughs> but, yeah, I got that. I, I showed the guy the, the tour poster, and he's like, I can do that. Like, I'll be honest with you, a lot of people in my house don't like it, and they constantly give me crap for it, but I personally love it. I love my, my tentacle tattoo. I think it's great. So, if you ever get, like, something on you, and, so, and like, people constantly knock you down, it's your body. You get to decide what you put on it. I'm happy with it, so I don't care what they think. And finally, yeah, can you see it? It's like super tiny line of work. My first tattoo, baby. Like right out of high school. <laughs> that one, yeah, it's the Fall Out Boy Volcano symbol. Like, when that was the little symbol. Have they put out a new symbol for Mania yet? I mean, we know it's like the purple and all that, but there's no really new symbol yet, is there? I don't know. It's just like neon. Okay. <laughs> anyway, that tattoo was just for honestly when things blow up in my life a lot of things blow up at once it just kind of erupts so not only was it fallout boy but it's just like a really like it was my first tattoo first of all i was freaked out everyone said it was like really bad it's not that bad <laughs> but i wanted line work i wanted i wanted a volcano but i didn't want to get like a crazy ass volcano on my leg or something so i decided to stick with like the fallout boy logo so it's, it combines something i like with something that just is inevitable, like just explosions of everything happening all at once. And it's just, it's cr it's crippling sometimes, but you have to push through it. You have to like move on despite everything just blowing up. You have to keep going. You have to strive to survive. And that's what it is. And honestly, that's like one of the first times I've really explained it really in depth. So yeah, <laughs> that's it. Well, that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed me answering questions. Um, 
thank all you guys that submitted questions. Um, I hope this, like, I answered your questions well. I know I tend to ramble and, like, words from here to here often translate weird, but I appreciate you guys listening all the same. Hey, if you're new to my channel, maybe you'd like to hit the subscribe button to be notified when I make videos. I'm, try I'm trying to make more skits. I usually talk about books and other things I enjoy, such as this. I'm going to be talking about this soon, so look out for that. I'm also currently reading Blood Rose by Danielle Rose, so if you're looking forward for to a review on that before it comes out, in um, when this video comes out, it'll be five days on June 21st. Be sure to look out for that because it is a great story about, what do you know, vampires and witches. So, if you're looking forward to hearing more about that book, stick around, hit that subscribe button. There should be a little icon around here where, that you can hit to be taken to my page where you can sub subscribe and be notified when, that, when those videos come out. If you want to see a playlist of all my old videos, of all my vlog videos, you can find it right here or somewhere in this general area. Who knows where it'll go. I hope you guys have a lovely day slash night. And I'll see you later. You know, nobody asked, but these freaking fruit-filled Twizzlers are the best things ever. Especially the key lime ones.